A good example of a capacitive sensor is a condenser microphone. A condenser microphone takes audio signals, which is essentially air pressure variations, and converts it into a voltage uh, output. A condenser microphone essentially consists of a pair of uh, conducting plates, as shown here. Uh, one of these plates is stationary and it is fixed to the casing, while the other plate is, is uh, fixed through a spring to the casing. And as uh, sound uh, falls on this plate, this plate moves um, back and forth, and that changes the distance between the two plates and therefore changes the capacitance of this sensor. And this capacitance is uh, converted into the voltage by the circuit here. So let's see how this works. The equivalent circuit of a condenser microphone is shown here. So we have a capacitor which uh, changes in response to sound and we have a voltage supply and a resistance attached. The output that uh, is the output voltage across the resistance is uh, picked up and amplified further. Let's just take a closer look at the condenser microphone. So the capacitance is given by this equation as we have already seen. Now the charge on the capacitor is going to therefore be given by C into V where V is the voltage on the capacitor and therefore the charge is going to be given by this equation. Now this equation is nonlinear in L. Now we want to make it linear in L because uh, the because L is the quantity that is changing in the capacitor and that is the capacitance is changing as a response to the change in distance between the two plates. So one way of linearizing this equation would be using a Taylor series approximation and uh, the first two terms for a Taylor series approximation are given in this uh, equation here. So if you write Q0, Q0 is basically Q which is the charge on the capacitor and essentially we write that equation for uh, the stationary position or for the starting position and in that case the distance between the plates of the capacitor is T so instead of L we have T and the voltage across the capacitor is going to be just the voltage of the source which is E. Similarly if we differentiate Q with respect to L and Q with respect to V and substitute values in both these equations, we get these terms. And in this case, we can see that we have linearized uh, the equation with respect to L. And instead of L, we are using X as the displacement. So, the rela so, so we have a relationship between uh, the charge on the capacitor and the displacement X. Okay, So charge is not a very good quantity because we cannot measure it. So let's just look at what happens when you write current. So for getting current, we differentiate Q with respect to T. Now this is a constant term, so this disappears. And if you differentiate this, we get dx over dt, and the rest of the term remains the same. And if you differentiate this term, we get this. And the basic reason why we get this is because delta V can be written as I into R, because the change in voltage is also the voltage that appears across the resistance. And this gives us a differential equation which relates the current and the displacement um, of the capacitive plate of the condenser microphone. We can take that differential equation that we got in the previous case, which is here, and we can convert it into the frequency domain. So you have I omega and Essentially, all the terms remain same except dx by dt is replaced by j omega x omega and di by dt is replaced by j omega i omega. Uh, if we do some algebra and we will get the transfer function which is given like this. So this is a relationship between the current that is induced in the circuit as a response to the displacement of the capacitive plates. Now from this we can gather, we can get the output, what the output voltage across the resistor is going to be. And that's basically going to be done by multiplying 
i over x with r because r into i is the voltage or output of the condenser microphone and if we do that we see that the output of your microphone and the displacement are related by this equation now what is interesting here is that this is a relationship this is a gain relationship it tells you what is the gain how does a displacement result in what voltage of the condenser microphone and it tells that with respect to frequency so let's say if omega is zero that is it's zero frequency or you have dc uh, pressure applied on the condenser microphone what is the output of the condenser microphone going to be it's going to be essentially zero so for dc you're going to have a zero output what about very very high frequencies so let's say high frequencies so for high frequencies what is going to happen is this term is going to become much larger than 1 and therefore j omega tau and j omega tau cancel together and you have a constant gain of e over t okay and what happens at medium frequencies the uh, gain is going to increase and become e over t so the gain frequency curve if you plot that omega versus vc over x is going to look something like this and therefore this has something like a high pass characteristic of course what we have not really looked at with the condenser microphone is the is the mechanical construction of the condenser microphone because one of the plates is attached with springs to the casing of the condenser microphone and that is also going to result in uh, some changed dynamics of the system.